my name is uh, Cameron Smith, and today we're going to be going over the basic of nutrition, um, the food groups, and how they function um, within a healthy diet. So the first food group we're going to go over is vegetables. The recommended daily intake for these vegetables is going to be one to three cups, um, depending on the age and the gender of the person that's consuming them. Um, vegetables are one of the healthiest and most nutrient-dense food groups that we have. Um, the things that make vegetables so healthy um, is the high amounts of digestive system helping fiber, vitamins and minerals that help support the body systems, and the antioxidants that vitamins have that can help repair cells and prevent cell damage within the body. The most abundant vitamins and minerals that are in vegetables are going to be vitamin A, vitamin C, folate, which is a B vitamin, and potassium. Um, now for this entire project, I used the MyPlate rules and guidelines to help me get this information. And for each um, for each food group, MyPlate has a tip. And the tip that MyPlate had for vegetables is going to be eat a variety of vegetables and colors of vegetables. Um, so this really is just you know have the rainbow on your plate, have you know greens and reds and oranges to help you get the full range of vitamins that vegetables can offer, as well as the full range of antioxidants and minerals. Now the next, the next food group that we're going to talk about is fruits, and the recommended daily intake for fruits is going to be one to two cups, depending on the age of the person. Um, now fruits are pretty similar to vegetables in the levels of health that they have. They have fiber, they have vitamins and minerals, just like vegetables do, um, which can help with overall digestive health, and um, the vitamins and minerals can help with hydration, organ regulation, and really any sort of support the body needs. Um, the vitamins for this one, fruits do have more vitamins than uh, vegetables do. So they have the full range of B vitamins. They have vitamin A, K, D, E, and C. So all the fat soluble vitamins and then B vitamins and C vitamins. Um, and as far as minerals go, they have iron, calcium, potassium, um, and zinc. So a wider, a wider range of vitamins and minerals than vegetables do. Um, the one thing to look out for is fruits will have higher sugar content. So if you're watching your sugars, um, fruits may not be as good of an option for you as vegetables are. Um, and it's like we talked about on the vegetable slide, um, the choose my plate tip for fruits is going to be focus on whole fruits instead of canned fruits. And this is because when you're when you're consuming lots of canned fruits, they're going to have lots of added sugars to them. Um, and this is mainly just because, you know, that's just the way they're packaged, get them to um, stay longer um, and have longer expiration dates than organic fruits, but they will have more sugars. Um, so just watch out for that when buying your fruits. So for the next food group that we're going to go over, it's going to be continuing our trend of food groups that are high in fiber and high in vitamins and minerals. And that's going to be grains. The recommended daily intake for grains is going to be 1.5 ounces to 4 ounces, depending on age and gender of the person. Um, so, so with grains, they're different from vegetables and fruits in this in the idea that they have more carbs and more unprocessed carbs to be used as energy. Um, so they still have the high amount of fiber that fruits and vegetables are going to have, um, and they still have lots of vitamins and minerals to help the body, um, but they will have more unprocessed carbs for the body to use as energy through activity um, and things like that. So the vitamins and minerals within grain products are gonna be the full range of B vitamins, iron, magnesium, and selenium. So they have less vitamins than, uh, or I guess a, a less range of vitamins than fruits and vegetables will, um, but they do have a solid range of minerals in the iron, magnesium, and selenium. Um, so the my plate tip for this one was make half of your grains whole grains, and the reason for this is the whole grains are going to be higher in fiber as well as they're going to be less processed and a lot easier for your body to use um, as energy through workouts and really just daily activity. Um, so keep that in mind when, when looking at products that have a lot of carbs and a lot of grains in them, see how many grams of those carbs are coming from whole grains and how many of them may be coming from processed carbs. And for the last two food groups that we talk about, um, this one's protein and the next one's going to be dairy. They're, they're different from fruits, vegetables, and grains in the way that they, don't, they aren't going to have as high of fiber. Um, but they are going to be more centered around protein and fats in the diet. Um, so for protein foods in particular, which is this slide, um, the recommended daily intake for those is going to be two to six ounces per day. 
And this depends on a lot. Um, it's going to be depending on age, the gender, and the amount of physical activity. So if you're doing a lot more of high intensity workouts and weight training, um, then you're going to want to be um, farther up the scale towards the six ounces. But if you're not doing as much physical activity, then you won't need um, as much protein throughout the day. Um, so protein is really utilized in the body um, for bones, it's utilized for muscle, for skin, um, it helps regulate your blood systems, um, and it is, is one of the most important things in the body for growing and building muscle and helping just maintain structure. Um, the nutrients that are found within the body are going to be vitamins and minerals, just like the last three food groups we talked about. It's going to be that full range of B vitamins, vitamin E, the fat-soluble vitamin, um, iron, zinc, and magnesium. Um, and it is going to be a very good source of magnesium, which a lot of other food groups aren't. Um, so the one issue that a lot of people have with meat is going to be the, the fat content. Um, so the way to... to utilize this and the way to, to have less fat content is going to be eating leaner meats. So 93.7 or 96.4 instead of 80.20 and 70.30. And that's going to really reduce the amount of saturated fats and cholesterol that you're consuming. Um, and the my plate tip for this one was vary your proteins. Um, and this is just because different proteins have different types of fats and different types of healthy fats. So fish, you're going to get more omegas from the fats in fish, um, whereas you're going to get less omegas from the fats in, let's say, ground beef or ground turkey. Um, so just vary your proteins, um, vary the types of proteins and the types of fats that you're intaking. Um, eat those leaner meats um, to help your saturated fats and cholesterol, cholesterol levels, and you should be good. And the last food group that we're going to go over today is going to be dairy. Um, and the recommended daily intake for dairy is going to be two to three cups per day, depending on age. And dairy, the, the food group, is going to be more similar to the protein food food group um, than it is going to be grains, uh, fruits, and vegetables. So the dairy it has a ton of calcium in it. It's the largest source of calcium found in the American diet which is really good um, for bone health and structure, just like protein foods were. And it also contains a lot of vitamins and minerals. Um, the vitamins and minerals found in dairy products are going to be vitamin D, um, which it comes in abundance, calcium, which like I said, it's the best source of calcium in the American diet, and then potassium, the electrolyte. So when choosing dairy and when choosing what kind of dairy products you're going to use, the main thing to look at is going to be the fat content. So dairy, just like a lot of non-lean meats in the protein food section, is going to be higher in saturated fat and higher in cholesterol. The way to circumvent this, just like in meats, it was choosing, choosing leaner meats, it's gonna be choosing fat-free or low-fat dairy options. So lower fat milk, lower fat cheeses, um, things of that nature. Um, it does contain a good amount of protein, um, so dairy is also used as a, as a protein food because it does have a good amount of protein per cup in it. Um, and the choose my plate tip was just move to a low fat or fat free milk and yogurt. Um, so help yourself um, by cutting down those saturated fats and cutting down that cholesterol and just using to a lower fat or a, or a fat free source of dairy. And since this is the last slide um, of this presentation, I just kind of wanted to go over um, kind of the summary of it. And the summary is just hit every food group. Um, figure out some way um, to, within your diet, hit every food group, get the, the variations of vitamins, get the variations of vegetables and fruits and grains and vary your meats and get your dairies in. And fully just, if you hit every food group, um, and you get as close to the recommended daily intake as you can for what you need to consume, that is the best way to use the food groups to create yourself a, a healthy and sustainable diet. Thank you.